Greetings to you all, gamers and strategists, and welcome back to our channel. The core component of the Galactic Civilization games are the civilizations themselves, and their myriad interactions together as each plays its part in an epic intergalactic drama. And it's not just the lore of each civilization that sets them apart from one another either. Their underlying gameplay mechanics are carefully woven together to create a natural asymmetry, ensuring each playthrough brings a unique challenge and tells a whole new story. Let's examine the fundamental components that constitute a civilization, and then see how these work together to inform a playstyle and potential strategies when facing off against various rivals in a game of galactic civilizations. Each Civ boasts two civilization abilities that provide powerful gameplay effects, such as improved population growth or being able to enslave your own citizens for a manufacturing boost. Cultural Focus provides a big discount to the amount of culture points required to purchase traits from the specified ideology. Biology describes the physical makeup of your civilians, including what conditions they need to grow and reproduce. Two behaviour attributes specify the way the AI will play the civilization in game. Civilization traits further inform how a civilization plays by giving bonuses or penalties to their performance in key gameplay areas. For example, fast plus two means ships travel an extra two hexes per turn, a significant advantage over slower civs. Each species of civilian has their own unique traits and abilities too, such as having a high intelligence or occasionally laying eggs inside civilians of other species and using them to grow even more Festron. Each civilization has a selection of four different factions. Assigning skilled leaders to these factions provides powerful modifiers to your manufacturing, gross income, research and more. This generally replaces the expenditure sliders of past games in the series with something more fun to use. Finally, Certain civilization policies can be unlocked through research and cultural progression to provide powerful, civilization-wide bonuses that can be added and changed at will. These are the individual cogs in the engine that drive the overarching theme of a civilization, while still allowing the player plenty of room to customize their own unique playstyle and find an optimal strategy for approaching the challenges each randomly generated map presents. Furthermore, the presence of one or more specific rivals in a game may drastically change the approach required for your civilization to win the day, in contrast to their perceived strengths and weaknesses. The Mimot are a peace-loving species who need to expand to find new colonies quickly. But what happens when they're hemmed into a small area of space by the Festron or the Drengin? Perhaps a more forceful approach is required. It turns out the Mimot have the tools to do the job. In this game, Four very different civilizations face off against one another on a large single sector map. Let's see how each might analyze their in game situation, including the strengths and weaknesses of their neighbors, and counter them with their own unique set of tools and tricks defined by the kind of civilization that they are. The Manti Cluster can grow very quickly. They prefer ocean worlds, but their traditionalism cultural focus presents an opportunity to mitigate the approval penalties for settling less suitable worlds, while boosting the growth rate and productivity of their Manti citizens in tandem with civilization policies, complementing their natural manufacturing boost from productivity plus one. Their paranoid and warrior traits make them very powerful in defense, while their broad faction choices allow them to play peacefully or more forcefully as the situation demands. Currently, they occupy the north of the game map, neighbouring both the corporate sector to the south and the cosmic contaminants on their southeastern border. They have some small holdings in the west too. Corporate sector's central positioning with two very aggressive neighbours puts them in a tough spot. The Manti can use them as a shield while growing themselves stronger. Their civilization policy underwater homes houses more civilians before needing to find new colonies, granting some much needed time to watch the sector's political situation further develop. The corporate sector like a trade partner, and the Manti are happy to profit from this mutually beneficial arrangement, and so if border friction can be kept to a minimum, each empire will have a potential ally in the other. Raiding the cosmic contaminant will take some pressure off the corporate sector, allowing them to focus on fighting the Yaw more directly and lessening their chances of losing in a 2 vs 1 engagement. The Manti Cluster's northern position and strong defensive traits allow them to continually weather assaults from the cosmic contaminant while continuing to expand west and developing their existing infrastructure further. Courageous Plus One ensures they're well suited to resist the cosmic contaminants powerful invasions, 
While the civilization abilities Paranoid and Warriors makes their fleets incredibly strong when defending their own territory. This means they can dedicate less resources to fighting a defensive war than the Cosmic Contaminant will need to mount a meaningful invasion. If the corporate sector do fail, and begin to lose significant territory to the Yaw and Cosmic Contaminant, the Manti can reluctantly declare war and move in, vulturing everything they can before their most aggressive rivals can swallow the centre of this sector up entirely. The resulting game state would see the Manti in a very strong position. Neither the Yaw nor the Cosmic Contaminant are likely to ally with one another, and will be weakened after such a long and hard-fought war, ensuring the Manti Cluster are the most powerful civilization left in the resulting Mexican standoff. The Yaw are positioned on the southern portion of the map, and have already overcome one of their main disadvantages, having secured huge amounts of the Durantium they need to fabricate new Yaw civilians, enough to rapidly grow their empire and build many advanced starbase modules. Yaw civilians can be crammed into planets with no approval penalty, meaning the Yaw can play a tall game, with fewer core worlds and colonies, and have done so here. However, with only three core worlds and four colonies, they're running a serious credit deficit with too many starbases eating into their budget, and so further expansion will be limited until they can stabilize their finances. Let's take a look at their civilization traits and abilities and formulate a plan of action. Adaptable and unwavering allow the Yaw to colonize extreme worlds, are highly resistant to influence attacks from other civilizations, and are well suited to extremely aggressive colonization tactics to push enemy borders back in on themselves. With clever plus one and progressivism, they research very quickly, can field very high-tech fleets, and can defend any gains taken from the corporate sector and the cosmic contaminants after using brutal plus one and soldiering technologies to rapidly capture the enemy's worlds. The cosmic contaminants, also at war with the Manti Cluster, are no friends of the Yaw, but together they have almost defeated the corporate sector, whose remaining ships are wisely guarding their core worlds. The Yaw cannot just leave their eastern neighbours to completely swallow the corporate sector. That would draw the Manti Cluster into the conflict, attacking the floundering corporate sector while the Yaw would be unable to finance the fleets necessary to fight the two remaining opponents. This is a tricky situation for the Yaw, and their next move may be a critical one. Contrary to the Cosmic Contaminants and their unlikable and unconvincing traits, the Yaw do have diplomatic options, and are well known for duplicitous behaviour. Here, they should first take any core worlds being assaulted, and then quickly negotiate a ceasefire with the corporate sector in return for a substantial tribute, alleviating the Yaw's credit deficit while placing a tight financial shackle on the corporate sector in return. This would allow the corporate sector and the Manti Cluster to focus their efforts on the cosmic contaminants, who are rapidly snowballing in power. Then, the Yaw should turn their advanced fleet on this dreadful threat themselves, and declare war on the cosmic contaminant too granting the corporate sector some breathing space to rebuild a little and stopping the Manti from intervening by attacking them too. While the Manti and Iridium civilians cannot live on heavily polluted worlds and so will gain little from taking territory from the cosmic contaminants, the Yaw's synthetic civilians will quite happily live in sludge. The Yaw should fight carefully, not allowing any one of their enemies to grow too strong while expanding their own colonization efforts and taking key worlds from their eastern neighbor while the others wear themselves down in a fruitless war. Once the Yaw have more colonies to tax and a stronger financial foundation, they can pick on the weakest of the remaining civilizations and make a play for victory. The corporate sector focus on the accumulation of credits and generally enjoy a strong economy. Wealthy gives starting credits and access to Universal Translator. Traders provides a freighter to fund their early development efforts, while Explorers enables them to find the best colonies and resources earlier. However, this mid-sector position does not suit them, sandwiched between three strong civilizations, with the belligerent Yaw and relentless Cosmic Contaminant having already destroyed most of the corporate sector's fleets and are threatening their core worlds. This is a crisis moment for the corporate sector, and things don't look good for them. Their beleaguered forces need breathing space to rebuild their fleets and defensive starbases. Also, they're looking to trade with the Manti Cluster, which will strengthen their economy and diplomatic relations between the two, and hopefully team up to fight off the Yaw and the Cosmic Contaminant, who are unlikely to ally with one another by way of response. Iridium are carbon-based and need food to reproduce, but supplies are low. There are several planets within their territory to colonize, but it's crawling with enemy fleets and things look bleak. 
Somehow, the corporate sector must either lose some enemies, or gain some friends, or all is lost. If peace cannot be bought with the Yore or Cosmic Contaminant, then the Manti must be brought into the war. Paying them a monthly tribute and proclaiming friendship will start this process, and dissuade them from declaring war themselves. And this is a cost the corporate sector can easily afford, even now. Their Iridium civilians will be unhappy until a large treasury is maintained, but this expenditure is vital to their long-term survival, and their high natural social skills, plus the huge stat bonuses gained from individualism make them good entertainers to counter this lower approval. By leveraging their natural ability to make credits granted by the rich trait, and carefully choosing faction membership and civilization policies to favor industry over economy, the corporate sector can be placed on an emergency war footing to quickly build more ships, and if the Manti can be convinced to assist them, there may be a chance to fight off the alien menace terrorizing their worlds. Finally, we turn to the relentless hordes of the cosmic contaminant, whose adaptable and radiated civilization abilities ensure a larger pool of potential planet classes to expand to. However, the irradiated amoeba, while quick to grow and evolve to new stages of development, are initially rather weak and unsuited to planetary labour. Furthermore, as an ammonia-based civilization, they require high planetary pollution for optimal growth, and so they can be a little slow off the mark compared to their rivals. To counter this, they can become very strong as their civilians evolve, and their fast civilization trait ensures they can make up for lost time in the colonization race. As you can see here, the cosmic contaminants are just getting going, with the invasion of the beleaguered corporate sector well underway, and the dreaded Yore too busy with their own war to be too much trouble. There are many uncolonized planets within their borders, but their aggressive and expansionist behaviors, along with being unlikable, inevitably push the cosmic contaminants into early conflicts whether they're ready for it or not. The Manti Cluster are leading in prestige, and while there's time yet to take the leading position, they cannot be ignored. If the corporate sector fall, the Manti have a chance for a rapid expansion, but here, the Cosmic Contaminant's fast trait gives them an advantage as they race to the best spoils, and the Manti's paranoid ability will not help them when fighting outside of their own territory. Since the corporate sector are looking very weak, part of the Cosmic Contaminant's forces can continue to raid the Manti, but they are very strong in defense. In this war of attrition, sending probes to find the best of the Manti's core worlds and repeatedly hitting them with the abhorrent infection executive order would cause great discomfort to the Manti and prepare them for their eventual invasion. Militant Plus Two will ensure that control points are flowing in to repeat this deadly trick, but it won't work on the Yore, whose synthetic civilians don't care about pollution at all. The unlikable Minus Two trait tends to lock the cosmic contaminants into their wars, with victory the only way out, and sooner or later, they will be at war with every civilization in the game. Picking the right target is paramount to victory, and once the corporate sector are gone, the race to swallow their territory will be an opportunity to strike. But who should they pick? And so you see that each civilization, whether core or custom generated, will have its own unique set of tools and playstyle determined by its civilization traits, abilities, and other interlocking game mechanics. And with every map you generate, each populated by different civilizations and each bringing in their own threats and promises and strengths and weaknesses ensures every game you play will be different to the last. As always, thanks for watching and happy gaming. <laughs>